Hey guys, so story time. Back in the spring of 2019, when I was getting back into regular cycling and fitness, some cycling friends of mine would ask me, oh, are you gonna get back into racing? And my answer was no, definitely not. I just wanna enjoy riding and being outdoors and being fit. But after a week or so, as my fitness starts to come on, then I get the question again, and then it's like, well, I, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, I, maybe like a one day races or, you know, road races or, 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 you know, just every now and then. But then after a couple more weeks, the fitness really starts to come on. Then my answer goes, yes, definitely. Where's the next race? I got to have it. I got to race right now. This little story is pretty analogous to my return to astronomy over the last year and a half. When I started building telescopes, I was really only interested in visual astronomy. I didn't want to do the whole astrophotography thing again, where you're lugging all this gear out to the desert and setting up and, you know, hunkered over a laptop in the freezing cold in the middle of the night and troubleshooting and unplugging and plugging and all that stuff. I just wanted to enjoy the natural beauty of seeing outer space with my own eyeballs. And in doing so, I really developed a joy and passion for visual astronomy. So that was really great. However, just like my time with cycling, it was pretty inevitable that I would come full circle and fall into the astrophotography rabbit hole once again. When I built my harmonic drive mount about a year ago, I assembled it exclusively in an Alt-As mode, which is suitable for visual astronomy, but not for long exposure imaging. However, I kind of future-proofed it for myself in that I knew that if I wanted to, I could reconfigure it into an equatorial mode. I would just need some sort of a wedge. I found this nifty little wedge on AliExpress, which should be about perfect. It's all machined aluminum and fairly good quality. There's a little bit of play or backlash or eccentricity in the altitude adjustment screw. That's not all that great, but it does work. And it also has a locking screw for the altitude as well as locking knobs for the azimuth and azimuth adjustment knobs. Pretty much everything you need. I did make one slight modification, which was to drill out and tap a hole for this large M12 bolt here. And this is so I could install it onto my Miller photo video tripod. I didn't want to buy a whole other tripod. I wanted to make use of the gear I had. So this was a pretty simple modification to make that work. The wedge has a standard Vixen style dovetail clamp, so I'll just need a way to attach a Vixen style dovetail to the right ascension axis on my mount. I designed these two clamp adapter parts to be 3D printed in my favorite carbon fiber polycarbonate material. They get heat set inserts for the clamps as well as heat set quarter 20 inserts on the bottom. And then on the rear part, there's a flat area for attaching the electronics enclosure. While you're watching me assemble this, I want to remind you to please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I definitely appreciate your support. 
I also want to remind you that I have a Patreon account set up. Check out the links in the description below. If you'd like to support my work over there, I would very much appreciate it. I have uh, this as well as a bunch more content on the way. And of course, all my CAD files will be on my website and on printables. I like to share those with the community, my way of giving back. So if you'd like to support what I do, check out Patreon or you can consider joining the channel here on YouTube. And okay, there we go. The mount is reconfigured. And I like this uh, assembly. That makes for kind of like a maybe a little bit of a neater, more compact, kind of nice, tidy looking package. So I'm really pleased with how this is looking so far. The camera I'm using is the Uranus C from Player One Astronomy, which is a planetary camera. And that's what I bought it for. See my previous video. However, Image sensors these days are really good, and even this little camera is capable of producing some banging deep sky images, especially considering the cost. For optics, I'm using the Rokinon 135mm f2 lens, which is quite popular in the astro community for wide field imaging. However, with the Uranus C's small image sensor, this wide field turns into kind of a medium field with a full frame field of view equivalent of approximately 455 millimeters. That's perfect for larger targets like the Andromeda Galaxy, the Heart and Soul Nebulae, and many others. I'll also be using the remote focuser that I built as seen in my previous video. Here's the CAD for the rig to mount all this. Pretty simple, just a couple of rings that will mount to a standard Vixen dovetail. This is actually the second iteration of these parts. I don't have CAD for the original anymore, but the assembly is basically the same. This is the lens adapter that I'm starting with, and you can see my ring actually clamps the adapter to the lens, so that should help take up any slop that there may be in the lens mount. I forgot to install the focus gear before installing the rear ring clamp, the focus gear just presses on to the rubber focus ring of the lens. This was the version one of the focuser mount dovetail. This part ended up not really working out well and I would redesign it into the design in the CAD shown earlier.
Here are the first test slews of the Focuser and the RA and Declination motors. And now the telescope is ready for first light. My goal for this first night was just to see if I could actually pull or align the mount and maybe see if I can get a little bit of data. And I did. Here's the Dumbbell Nebula, which is a bit small for this field of view, but at least you can see it. And then here's the North American Nebula. I was able to do 60 second exposures, which at the time I thought was fairly consistent, but I later would realize that I was throwing away maybe 25% of those frames. To do better, I would need an auto guider. And this image is a culmination of pretty much all my efforts of optimization, which I will save for the next video as this one's already gotten long enough. Thanks again for checking out the video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check me out on Patreon, my website. All the CAD files are available, and I will see you in the next video.